This is 5-Minute Power Platform, and today we're going to talk about how to build a virtual machine that can run your robotic process automation, your UI flows. And the reason that's needed is flow runs in the cloud, your PC or server is going to run locally, and so you need a way to connect them. And to do that, Flow looks to Azure Service Bus, also in the cloud. And on your PC or server, you'll install on-premise data gateway. They'll connect to Azure Service Bus, and in that way, Flow in the cloud will be able to operate actions that you record using UI flows on your PC or server. And so to do that, then, let me show you the process to get this configured. So to get an Azure account, you just click Google for Azure Free Trial and click on the link there. And I'm going to use this one here. And then you can start for free using the same account that you're running Flow out of. So I'll click Start for Free. I'm going to log in with my Flow account here. And then we'll go through the steps to provision $200 monthly free Azure account. So I'm going to fill in this first information here, name, email, or name, email, and uh, last name. Click Next. It's going to verify your phone number and text you. I'm going to skip past that part and the credit card identification. And then you agree to, the, agree to that. And then you should have, if you're lucky, a confirmation saying you now have $200 in Azure credit. Now, if you've done this before, you may get a disappointing outlook outcome like I did here, saying that you're not eligible. And so I'm going to do the rest of this with my existing Azure account. But that's how you can then take your Flow account and turn it into an Azure account that you can provision your first VM. So moving over to Azure then, uh, let's, what I'll do is I'll create a virtual machine by clicking on virtual machines and then add at the top. And that'll allow me to start provisioning here. And I'm going to choose kind of all the basics. This isn't going to be the most secure VM. This is going to be a uh, uh, kind of a test VM. So first starting with the resource group, you can create that if you don't have one. I'm going to give it the name UI Flow 5. I'm going to use a Windows 10 virtual machine. So just like you would use on your desktop. So not a server or anything like that, just something to run UI flows. I'm using a D2 size VM. I'm going to give it a username, user flow stuff, not a great username. Put in the password. This is going to be the password you're going to use to log into it. So remember this username and password before you go too far because it's difficult to recover afterwards. Uh, and then we'll set up networking. I'm choosing all of the defaults here, and you can see the choices I've got here. Again, not focusing on security or locking down the network, but just really the basics of getting a VM running so that you can turn it on when you need it and turn it off when you don't. So to do that, to that impact, to that effect, I'm even turning off auto shutdown, right? Because we don't want it to shut down if we're using it in the evening. But you want to make sure that you do keep it powered off to save money, and uh, since it's not very secure. So then this will provision here, and it's going to uh, review everything, click create in the bottom left, and that will create the VM. The creation process will take a few minutes. This one took about 10 minutes overall, and so I'm going to fast forward through the creation steps here. Uh, but you can kind of see, you can, you can track its deployment as you go through the network steps and then creating the VM until eventually you have a VM you can log into. And so at the end of those 10 minutes then, you go to go to resource here at the bottom. And then... Uh, at the top left, we'll have a, a, the ability to connect into it using Remote Desktop Protocol, RDP. So I'll click Connect, and it's going to download a file that you can use to, uh, to connect into it. So we'll click Download RDP File. And then when you open that file, go past the warning, you type in the username and password. So it's UIFlow5 is the name of my machine, backslash, the one by the backspace, and then my username, and then the password you selected. And then that will log you into the virtual machine you just created. So just like logging into your computer, but this computer exists in the cloud. And so we'll accept some of the defaults, go through here. Now, the first thing we're going to do to get this ready for UI flows is uh, download Chrome. Because this Edge browser is the old version of Edge. UI flows plugin won't, won't run there. And so then uh, we'll come here. We'll say download Chrome. That's what Edge is often used for. And then we'll uh, download it here and then install Chrome. Now, once Chrome's installed, then we can go through our last two parts, which is installing the UIFlow plugin and the Selenium plugin for doing web uh, UIFlow web version, as well as uh, installing the on-premise data gateway. So now that Chrome is downloaded, we'll let it finish installing. Now, there's, uh, there's links to go directly to the UIFlow um, extension. I'm going to show you how I usually do it because I didn't remember the links. When you just start going through the process, it'll say, hey, you don't have the plugin installed. It'll take you right there. And so to do that, we're just going to go to flow.microsoft.com, logging in with the same username and password I've been using this entire time. Just now I'm working on the virtual machine instead of my desktop. And so then here I'm going to log in with my uh, admin at uiflows.microsoft.com account that I've been using for this demo. Sign in. Uh, we'll say stay sign in. This is the only thing we're going to use this PC for, this virtual machine. 
And then I'm gonna go through the process of just starting to record a UI flow. So down into my flows, uh, UI flows preview, that rightmost tab there. And then I'm gonna click new. We'll choose the web option, it doesn't really matter which one at this point. Give it a name, test, a base URL. We're just gonna choose bing.com, it's uh, default, the default text there. Uh, it doesn't matter, none of this is gonna get saved. All this does is this gives us that download link right there where we can download the Chrome extension. Run the Chrome extension, it's gonna pop up this box. We accept the terms, click install. Once it's installed, it's gonna prompt us to go to the top right corner of Chrome, we can enable it. So we'll enable it. And then it's gonna prompt us, it's gonna, it's gonna suggest that we restart the browser. It really does want you to. If you try to go back in here and go past it, it's not gonna recognize it has it. So if we go back through this test, uh, bing.com, launch recorder, it's gonna be like, yeah, no, you, don't, you still don't have it, right? So close the browser, reopen it, and you'll see that it'll, it'll find it. So now the second one, if you're gonna do a web UI flow, you need to have the Selenium extension installed. So we're gonna go through that same step. This time it's gonna prompt us for the second one. And again, I'll include URLs for this. This is just how I usually do it because those URLs are uh, usually less handy than this. So click new, web app, give it a name, test. We'll go to Bing again. We're not gonna record or save any of this. It doesn't really matter. We just need a URL in there so that we can get the prompt to record to install the plugin. There we go, there's the download. It's taking us directly to the Selenium IDE plugin. We'll add that to Chrome. And now we have all the Chrome plugins we need to do UI flows. So the next step then is to install the on-premise data gateway. So I'm just gonna download the link, or Google the link here, it takes me to the download link for on-premise data gateway. It's going to download and then we install it and I'll show you the steps how to install the on-premise data gateway. And this is what takes this virtual machine and connects it to flow through Azure Service Bus in the cloud. So we'll accept the terms. Once it installs here, it's gonna give us this pretty simple install. First is the email address to use. So this is our flow login that we wanna use. So again, admin at uiflows.onmicrosoft.com is what I'm using, because that's my flow account. And then just complete the login process here. Finishing the login here then, uh, we're gonna register a new gateway on the computer. I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call this one uh, on-premise UI flows. And then I'm gonna give it a recovery key. So this way, if I need to reinstall this, I can then recover this gateway and all my flows will recognize it. So definitely record that password. We'll go through the uh, configuration process here. And now we can see we've got those check marks down there. It is all connected. So now it is connected to Azure Service Bus so we connect, can connect to it through Flow. And we can verify that too. So let's open up Flow here. So I'm gonna get off my virtual machine and just get onto my desktop where I'm writing my flows. And if we go into data, and uh, gateways, you'll now see that from flow, it now recognizes this gateway. And so now my virtual machine is now connected into, uh, is connected into my, my flow. So I hope this helped. This is one important part so we can start playing around with UI flows. And you haven't, if you haven't been that experienced with virtual machines, this is a way for you to get started in creating a virtual machine just for in, in a real simple test configuration. Thanks for watching.